Good morning, everyone. How's the Josh? Yeah, yeah, you guys. I know India lost the match day before yesterday, but today, as IAS guys, this is for celebration. Okay? How's the Josh? How's the Josh? ठीक है अब लग रहा है मजा आ रहा है हाँ good 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 very good very good you know it's unbelievable that this is the tenth year of the India Inclusion Summit and I haven't even realized this been ten years have you guys figured it out it's already ten years no right now this is going to be an emotionally draining talk for me so forgive me if I sometimes choke. Um, but I also know it's an emotionally draining time for many of you in this room. A lot of people tell me, Firoz, you guys give us water, but you don't give us tissue paper. Here. <laughs> My mom is here. My mom is here. She'll come here and cry every time she is here. So while I was coming in, you know, a lot of people are giving me love and hugs. And one of them asked me this question, Firoz, what does IS mean for you? Kaisa lagta hai aapko? To see this, what we call the love fest, logo ka pyar, how does it feel? Honestly, I don't know. I am too small to put words to the love that I get here. Too small. I met my friend, and I'm not sure if I should name because some of these things are so personal. And I don't want to talk about this in a platform without permission. But I'll tell you the experience. कि लोग यहाँ जो आते हैं उनका उनकी stories क्या है? So I asked. She met me after three years. Of course, I'm meeting many of them after three years. She came and hugged me. कल की बात है. And she said, and I asked her, how are you doing? बहुत कम लोग मुझे बोलते हैं कि दे आर नॉट डूइंग वेल कितनी भी दर्द हो सब गले मिलते हैं प्यार से बोलते हैं डूइंग गुड दिस पर्सन केम एंड सेट फिरोज आई एम नॉट डूइंग गुड एंड आई सेट व्हाट हैपेंड एंड शी सेट फिरोज माय यंगर ब्रदर वाज डिसेबल्ड डाइट सिक्स मंथ्स अगो And for 10 minutes, she cried, and I cried. And she said, "Firoz, let me tell you, I haven't left my house for the last six months, but I wouldn't miss IS for anything. That this is the safe place, and I would do anything to be here." So, मैं क्या बताऊँ लोगों को कि what does this sacred place, this event is not. If someone thinks that we are coming to an event, then it's a wrong thing. But this is true. And I must confess that I get too much credit for having started this. I'm willing to take a small speck of the credit, but not the credit at all. Not the entire one. No way. बिकॉज इसके पीछे इतने सारे लोगों का प्यार है कि आई कैनॉट टेक क्रेडिट फॉर दिस एंड माई मेंटर गुरु माई फ्रेंड माई लव रजनी बख्शी मैम ऑलवेज गिव मी इन साइट्स टू पुट थिंग्स इन कॉन्टेक्स्ट एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज कॉन्टेक्स्ट द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इन लाइफ इज कॉन्टेक्स्ट इफ यू डोंट हैव द कॉन्टेक्स्ट You will not understand the larger picture. Or I want to say that the next 15 minutes, you give me your time. 15 minutes, because I want to tell you the context of this movement. That behind this, there are so many people who are suffering. I have to owe my debts to these people to give you an understanding of the context. Of what this is all about, I have to start with where it all started. I have to tell you where it all started. 
बिकॉज दिस इज नॉट अबाउट ईगो ये मेरी स्टोरी नहीं है बट ये कॉन्टेक्स्ट वाली बात है दिस इज अबाउट सेटिंग द कॉन्टेक्स्ट ऑफ हाउ वी अराइव हियर इन द लास्ट टेन ईयर्स सो यू हैव टू टेल यू हाउ इट ऑल स्टार्टेड एंड आई विल टेल यू थ्री डिफाइनिंग मोमेंट्स क्योंकि इतने सारे स्टोरीज है इसके इतने सारे स्टोरीज है कि मैं दस दिन भी आपको बोल दू तो आप सुनते रह जाओगे but i don't have the time yesterday i spent 45 minutes and people were in tears and they said firoz you have to do it again i said no this is not this is a space for these lovely kids jisko koi platform nahi milta i am fortunate i get platforms so i'll try to limit to 15 20 minutes and forgive me if i get emotional when i tell this because it is important not to tell the story about me but tell you the importance of the context I had no understanding of disability. Now, my khandan me koi tha, na mujhe pata tha. Tho the honge, but I didn't know. I had no understanding of disability, and I was living the perfectly charmed life. To be born in a house with great love is nothing short of a miracle. I was fortunate to have my parents who gave me great love and, more importantly, great values. I was surrounded by books. Didn't have enough money. i'm still surrounded by books because the wealth is not measured by the money in the bank but by the number of books in your house this my parents taught me so i was fortunate incredibly fortunate if you have loving parents you have hit a lottery boss you have hit a lottery don't forget that i was incredibly fortunate got into good engineering college got a job in no time at the age of 32 i was a managing director of a global multinational the youngest and people were putting me on a pedestal ki yaar ye duniya badalne wala banda aa gaya and every media loves a young guy doing well chada dete hain aur us sar pe bhi chad jati hai kabhi kabhi i married my college sweetheart बहुत परेशानी हुई स्टक इट आउट मैरिड एंड अ ब्यूटीफुल किड एंड आई थॉट दिस इज अ परफेक्टली वेल स्क्रिप्टेड लाइफ एनी बडी हैज अ डाउट हियर ही इज गुड लुकिंग किसी को डाउट है यू ऑल एग्री इज गुड लुकिंग ओके गुड यार थोड़ा जोर से यस बोलो ओके गुड थैंक यू द गुड थिंग इज एवरी पेरेंट थिंग दे आर द किड्स आर गुड लुकिंग ओके ये मेरी बात नहीं है सबको यही लगता है विवान वॉज बॉर्न यू आर सो गुड लुकिंग कि मैं कभी कभी यू नो वेन वी यूज टू कैरी हेम एंड उजाला वॉज सिटिंग यर नोज इट बिकॉज वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट प्लेस वी वेंट टू वॉज किरण बेदी मैम नवज्योति बट देन लाइफ चेंज life changed like this june 2010 ki baat hai i was having dinner with my cto in leela palace family dinner aur usne mujhe side pe bulaya aur bola firoz you know i see that vivan is not making eye contact and i was like that's okay he is 18 months old or less than that how does it matter but is he is talking i said no he's still 18 months i mean kids talk at 3 years 4 years i said no can you check i think you should take him to a doctor aur humne bola doctor ke paas kya le jana hai his you know his data is all looking good but the first thing we all do is go to doctor google hum log sab doctor google is the first thing to bola check if he is autistic so humne bola so i checked i went to google and searched what are the traits of autism on children i didn't tell my wife i was doing the search the first thing it said is they don't respond to your name so mujhe laga shayad he has a hearing problem like the kids you saw here then maybe they said you know they do the same things over and over again i said okay check then i said okay he's walking on toes check then he is doing this you know looking at the fan check looking at the wheels check and slowly slowly my heart sank 
And I said, here goes my perfectly well-scripted life. We went to doctors for the next three months. The first place we went was the hearing and speech impairment because they thought maybe he's not able to hear. I said, no, he can hear. He's perfectly capable, no speech. Long story short, after three months, we, the doctor, we went to the doctor's room. He called me and my wife and Vivan, and he said, it was, he's on the autism spectrum. And I said, okay, so can you give some medications? He said, you're not getting it. There are no medications for autism. It's a condition. I said, I said, give some medicines. He said, you're not getting it. This is a condition for life. What you can hope is that, you know, it's not severely autistic. He can be high functional, start on therapies. I didn't know what hit me at that time. I didn't understand what hit me. I drove back home with my wife, didn't speak to her. Locked myself in a bathroom and cried straight for 30 minutes because I didn't want to show my weakness. And then the worst started. I went into deep, what they call as the valley of despair. You fall off the cliff. The first thing is a sense of denial. It won't happen to me. It will happen to others, not to me. The second is of anger. The third is negotiation. The play, mind plays games with you. I said, I hope he's less severely autistic, not more. And then when you don't want to get up in the morning, you have realized that you've got into depression. And that's when a phone call changed my life. And that is my first defining moment. I'd cut myself off. People didn't know about it. Kiran Bedi ma'am used to message me and I would always respond to her. But I was stopped responding to her. And so she called me directly and said, Beta kya hua? Son, what happened? And I started crying and I said, Vivan is diagnosed with autism. I don't know what to do. And she said something that's changed my life forever. She said, Firoz, most people spend their entire life not knowing what their purpose is. You are incredibly fortunate the purpose found you. You are fortunate that you have the intellect, you have the network, you have the means, you have family support. Don't spend the rest of your life only taking care of your child. That is your first responsibility, but you also have a greater responsibility to cha drive change for the less fortunate people. And at that moment, it was like a switch going off in my mind from seeing myself as a victim. I said, I have an opportunity to drive change. And what transpired after that has been the most difficult, but also the most fulfilling experience. But I had no clue what to do. I didn't know what autism was. I had no clue what to do. So I dug myself deep and did all my research. I started speaking to parents. Many of them are in this room here. I'm grateful to have, they have given me their wisdom. I said, how is it to live with a child with disability? And you wouldn't believe, every parent told me the same thing. The biggest fear is what happens to my child after I'm gone. And there was one father who told me something, and this is, I've heard it across many times, but there was one father who said to me, Feroz, my wish is to live one day more than my son. And that broke my heart. The greatest grief that any parent could ever undergo is to see the child go and how is it that a father can ever tell me that his dream is to live one day more than the child because he doesn't know what to do after he's gone and at that day I said this is not fair somebody has to do something about this and I said I want to spend the rest of the life so that I don't hear this from any other parent again And that's where I met my dear friend Thorkel Sone, who's here, who was going through the same grief. But the difference was this man had done, acted on that. He flew all the way from Denmark just to be here. 
just to be here. He had the same problem 10 years ago. And he said, he found out that most people on the autism spectrum, and this is not about autism alone, this is about disability. I understood autism, but this is all about disabilities. There is 95% of the people who are disabled are not meaningfully employed. And hence they are not independent. And the fundamental root cause is if these kids can be, become independent, parents can die a little more peacefully. And he said, how is it that my son, who is so incredibly brilliant, never gets a job? And he said, the fundamental flaw is that the recruitment system looks at people for two specific skills, good communication skills and the ability to play in teams are an autistic children cannot do both of them. So nobody is hiring them. In India, 99% of the people who are in the autism spectrum never get a meaningful job. And he said, I have to change that. He started a company called Specialist Turner in Denmark, started hiring people on the autism spectrum, and he wanted to do it in a way that is not charity, but it should make business sense. And that is how Specialist Turner was born. I had invited him for a speech at SAP, and I was so moved that I said to my assistant, Sridhar, who is now in Germany, let's go to Denmark and understand what they do. And I went to his office and I was blown away. There were 100 employees of which 80 of them were on the autism spectrum. And they were all doing an incredible job. I came back and I said, if it can happen in Denmark, there's no reason it can't happen in India. I went to my HR and I said, we are going to hire people on the autism spectrum. And they said, Firoz, are you smoking? None of them had college degrees. And at SAP, we only hired people with engineering. They, they had no college degrees. I said, we will hire people on the autism spectrum. Everybody said, this is a stupid idea. Firoz, you are doing this because you want to get Vivan a job. He was 18 months, god damn it. Aaj bhi log tana marte. We hired three people on the autism spectrum. They were just school-going kids. We trained them for six months at Prayas Labs. We said we will hire them for testing at SAP. As luck would have it, in less than a year, between 12 to 18 months, we were able to prove that the three people on the autism spectrum were producing better outcomes than my best engineers. Some of them are here. The parents are here. And what happened after that was nothing but a series of coincidences. I became a young global leader at the World Economic Forum in 2012. I was invited to Davos to to, and given me five minutes to tell an idea that can change the world. And I gave a speech less than five minutes about ability and disability. Based on what I've learned, I said, if, if you hire people, if we give them an opportunity, they can be as good or better than everybody else. I gave the speech, CNN carried my speech the next day verbatim, and it, la and it was read, coincidentally, by the two CEOs of SAP, who was also in Davos. And they called me for a breakfast meeting in Davos, and he said, Firoz, what is, I've read this, are you doing this? I said, I've been doing it for one and a half years, I didn't tell anybody. Never ask for permission, you can ask for forgiveness later. They were impressed. They said, if you can do this in India, and you are saying it making business sense, this is not CSR, this is business sense. If you can do this in India, which is the hardest place to pull this off, can you do this across the world? I said, yes. He said, what percentage of the children are on the autism spectrum? I said, 1%. He said, we will hire 1% of SAP's global workforce on the autism spectrum. We were 65,000 people. We committed to hiring 650 people on the autism spectrum. 650, it is considered the greatest and the most landmark announcement ever done by a corporate in the history for people with disabilities. 1% guys, 650 people in one stroke. I wrote the press brief because people had no clue what we were talking about. I wrote the press brief, people said nobody is going to read this. Kisko Pada, it's a technology company, why should anybody read about hiring autism people on the autism spectrum? You wouldn't believe, since that Announcement happened. I was called by the head of diversity and inclusion. The phones have not stopped ringing. Can you come and help us? I sent Sunil, who's here right now. I said, go to Germany for six months. Help them figure this out. Ladies and gentlemen, 
This happened in 2010-13, and let me tell you the impact of this. In 2016, we were invited by Ban Ki Moon at United Nations and said, if SAP can do it, I want every corporate to do this. The Secretary General at the United Nations. In 2016, it became a Harvard case study. And people still ask me, how the hell does this start in India? Why come an advanced country like US didn't figure this out? I said, we figured it out because we had no other option. In 2019 was a high point. At SAP, we have something called the Hasso Plattner Award, and, for, and every year it is given to the most innovative team in the company, 100,000 people every year fight to get that award, and in 2019, for the first time, they made an exception, and they said, we are going it to an individual, not to a team. And this individual was on the autism spectrum. <laughs> what started here? The idea that happened in Germany now reached Argentina. This guy was an autistic person in Argentina. There was, they had no, never hired people on the autism spectrum, inspired by what we did. SAP today has hired 220 full-time employees, more than 200 part-time employees through this program. But ladies and gentlemen, here is the most important thing. A month ago we said, how many, how many other companies are doing this? And we couldn't count. At last count, 102 companies, this is what I know, there are so many companies are doing, 102 companies have copied the Autism at Work program, ladies and gentlemen, across the world, from JP Morgan to Goldman Sachs to IBM, 102 companies started. And it all started with one boy. So I can credit? I can't. If that phone call had, had, hadn't happened, I wouldn't have come out of my deepest despair. Let me tell you the second defining moment. Arun Shauri, whom I consider one of the greatest intellects in this country who is alive. I was fortunate to host him for a book talk. A book he had released called Does He Know a Mother's Heart? Some of the people here in this room was invited for that talk. Does he know a mother's heart? Do you know what the meaning of he is? He said, he means God. Does a God understand a mother's heart? And the reason he wanted to write this book was he said, I don't understand why disability is a taboo in India. The world population says 15% of the world's people are disabled, a billion people are disabled. How is it that in India it is only 2.2%? Why is this so low? It's not because it's low, it's just because it's taboo, we don't count, we don't come out. So I had hosted him for a book talk. I was going through my own struggles. He had a son who was profoundly disabled. And so he said, I want to know what every religion tell me about people with disability. What does Islam say about disability? What does Christianity say about disability? What does Hinduism say about disability? And what does Buddhism say about this disability? He said, I want to figure this out. And he said, the narrative in Hinduism is the problem. In Hinduism it says, ye karma hai, aapka paap hai. Because the blame is on you, people don't want to speak about it. This was a controversial book, but you know what? My room was full of mothers who came and said, Shauri Saab, thank you, aapne ye kitab likha. Because my family blamed me for this child. And I'd seen mothers crying. And that's what he said, does he know a mother's heart? So I said, sir, what do I do? He said, Firoz, the best narrative is in Buddhism. Buddhism says, the highest form of service is to take care of a child who can't give you anything in return. That is the highest form of service and that is what you should be doing. 
And he said one thing, never serve with a long face. However hard it gets, keep smiling. And he said, Feroz, if you have to do one thing to change the narrative of disability in this country, he said, change the narrative. Do not make it about sympathy. Celebrate for who they are. Build a platform where people will celebrate for who they are. They will sing and dance like everybody else. They have the same desires as all of you have. No different. The same dreams, the same aspirations as everybody else. Create a platform for that. And it has to be the best in the world. And that's how the idea of India Inclusion Summit came. When I started the first summit, I must tell you my thoughts were small. I thought I will do it in a small meeting room. And I called him, sir, and he said, Feroz, you call me anytime, I will come. So I was the MD, I thought I could do a meeting with 10 of my friends in a meeting room. So I said, Pranab, uh, Arun Shauri, sir, I'm doing this summit with a few people at SAP, can you come? He said, I will come, I will come to Pranab. And I didn't realize he was talking about the President Pranab Mukherjee. That's the time I realized, yeah, my thoughts are small. He is telling me that he will take the President and you are talking about a small meeting room. And that's when I realized this has to be the biggest platform in the world. If he thinks big, I can't think small. And that's how the India Inclusion Summit started, with the core purpose to celebrate here. We will be crying, but we will be happy. How does this function? People are surprised. People are surprised. How do you run this? There is no organization structure. There are no employees. I don't pay payroll. I have no office. We have zero assets. I don't ask for money. There are no logos and no egos. How the hell does this function? It functions because there are hundreds and thousands of volunteers who care. Who care? Aap dekhe, subhe se aay kitna pyaar se aapko welcome kiya. What they have done, and this is the most incredible question I was asked. Ki Firoz, if you, do you have to go through pain to find your purpose? They said, no. People can find their purpose through other people's pain too. In Logone, these volunteers have taken my pain and made it theirs. How can I take credit? I'll tell you this story, mind-blowing story. Unbelievable. How the world comes together. I, was, I got a phone call when I was in Palo Alto, and I was connected by my secretary and said, there is somebody called Senator Tom Harkin who wants to speak to you. And I was like, I didn't know who Senator Tom Harkin was. I just Google before I speak to him. There are six-page Wikipedia. Six page. He's one of the longest serving senators in American history. He's the one who's behind the American Disabilities Act. He's the one who's responsible for the subtitles because he said he had a younger brother who was deaf when he became the senator. He said, I will speak in the US Senate in sign language so that one person will understand what I'm saying. And he said, Feroz, come to DC. I want to give you an award for the work you've done. And I said, can I take my father? My father came with me. Such an incredible man. His humility was more important than what he had achieved. He said, Firoz, join my, can you stay one more day and join my board meeting? Can you advise me? And I'm like, I'm, who am I to advise this legend, icon? Inspired by the Inclusion Summit, he had started a own summit called the Harkin Summit. <laughs> and then he said, is there anything I'm doing wrong, Firoz? And I felt a little nervous to tell him that. And I said, why is it called the Harkin Summit, sir? This is not Feroz's summit. This is India Inclusion Summit, sir. It is not about me. He said, I didn't think that way, Feroz. I have to come. Now I understand what you are doing. I am doing an event, you are doing a movement.
No senator has come to Bangalore without informing any government officials. He landed up Arun Sri Kumar Maya. He took his small Maruti 800 car and went to the airport to pick him up. Senator, Maruti 800 tha ya alto tha, pata nahi kuch tha. <laughs> senator sahab ko lene pahunch gaye. Uske baad next day, yaan Bangalore mein khabar aagayi thi, US senator aaya, kisi ko pata hi nahi chala. I said, Pavitra, please take care of him for the next four days. He went to the, she took her to the Vidhan Sauda, all meetings cancelled to meet the, this great icon. He didn't tell anybody. He landed up here for four days. But here is where the magic happened. The magic happened on this stage. One of the most important people for me, most important people for me who come to the India Inclusion Summit is Prashant Kamath. अगर मुझे आईएएस करना पड़े सिर्फ प्रशांत कामत के लिए तो भी मैं करूंगा हर साल एवरी ईयर सिंस द इंक्लूजन समिट है स्टार्टेड ही वुड बी हियर एट 6:30 थर्टी ए एम गाइज इवन नौ बजे शुरू होने वाला है मामा बोल से ये रात को सोता ही नहीं है ही सर मेरे को इंक्लूजन समिट में आना है इवन टूडे ही वॉज द फर्स्ट पर्सन टू एंटर दिस हॉल एंड देन इज मदर टेल्ड फिरोज Prashant Kamath wants to be a speaker at Inclusion Summit. And I said, but he can't speak. And I called Arun, who's my lifeline. I said, Arun, Prashant Kamath will become the speaker next year. You figure out how to get that done. He spent four months visiting his house, curating a speech. We had no clue how to get Prashant Kamath to be a speaker on this stage. Many of you would have heard his speech. When he finished his speech, ladies and gentlemen, Senator Tom Harkin, who was right here, ran on the stage and went to his knees. That's the photograph. He said, I have been working in the disability space for 40 years. I've never heard a speech like that. And when people ask me, Firoz, what is the impact of the India Inclusion Summit? I say, I am a very small man for this impact measure. Prashant Kamath's mother, this phase tells it all. How do I measure the impact of that? Corona was a disastrous for the disability community. Disastrous. Our hearts broke. We said, for the first time, why is this the 11th year and the 10th summit? Because when COVID happened, we said, we will not spend the money on India Inclusion Summit, but we will support people with disabilities who have lost their primary caregivers. Because when you lose your primary caregivers, the person with disability dies too. And he said, we will not allow that to happen. We identified 68 people and we said, for the next 12 months, we will not just support financially, but I'll put 100 volunteers to talk to them every day. And I'm grateful for the volunteers from Allegis who called them every day to make sure that they're alive. <laughs> One of the greatest lessons that I've learned, ladies, is that there are different forms of currency. People think there is only one form of currency, ki paisa do. There are different forms of currency. The most important form of currency is joy, happiness, compassion. That is priceless. And that's what we want to provide. That's what we want to provide. Paisa koi bhi de sakta hai, time do, apni dil do, you will realize how, how priceless it is. I must tell you, it's incredibly hard to do this. Vivan is 13 years old now. He has no speech. He has a severe form of Crohn's disease. His health is always bad. The last three nights, I haven't slept properly because his health is bad. And my wife is telling, when are you coming back? She said something incredibly profound once. 
we had our moments of grief and despair and pain. And one day she said something incredibly profound. She's way smarter than I am. The most incredible woman I've met, the greatest unsung hero of my life. I get too much credit for what I do. Nobody has a clue what she's doing. Nobody has a clue what she's doing. How can I take credit, guys? She was my classmate. We were in one class for four years. I didn't know what I did. She was an incredible student. I was a bottomer. Joined SAP, outstanding employee. But after Vivan Singh happened, she left a job. She said, I'll take care of Vivan. And that moment of weakness, she said, Feroz, I will change Vivan for the world while you go out and change the world for Vivan. Why am I saying this, guys? Why am I saying this? And I, this is something that all of you have to understand. And Rajni Ma'am knew that when I had breakfast at the morning, she told me an incredible quote about George Soros. He said, no wealth is private. No wealth is private because it's always created in the context and you didn't create the context. It's the same. I cannot take the credit because it was the context that had driven me to this direction and the context was not in my hands. And that is what movements are about. Movements are not about individuals, they are leaderful. Her employee, her log is calm ke liye jo kiya sab leader hai. Apne tarikhe se. Every volunteer is a leader. In their own small ways. This is how he looks now. You still agree he's good looking? Thank you.